Hi, my name is Sarah Susan. I work with Environment, Health, and Safety. I'm here to provide an update on our PM2.5 air sensor project. Um, this was started in response to wildfire smoke impacts on campus. And last year we had a couple sensors that are um, Wi-Fi and plug-in versions that were originally funded by UCOP Office of Risk Services. And through the Connected Campus effort, we were able to expand our network this year and add these solar powered and cellular transmitted devices um, in a number of places on campus, both indoors and outdoors. So this is a clarity sensor that is solar powered and transmits data via cellular networks through this antenna. There's an air inlet on the bottom that pulls air in and the optical sensor counts particles of diameter 2.5 microns or less, and that is what PM2.5 stands for. It's the finer particulates um, in wildfire smoke that are the most harmful um, to people during wildfire smoke events. So one challenge we've had with decision making on campus is that our reference monitors that are managed by government agencies are down at Berkeley Aquatic Park in downtown Oakland, um, and then there's another one further near the San Leandro border, and those aren't necessarily representative of our, air con of our conditions here on campus. So by adding sensors, we've been able to provide more local data in comparison to those reference monitors. Currently, we have these sensors installed on the roof of University Hall, the roof of VLSB, Stanley Hall, Lawrence Hall of Science, and Crossroads, and that really creates a representative um, network going up the hill, um, since again, our reference monitor is down at a Berkeley Aquatic Park um, at Bay level. That gives us much more data heading up the hill. Um, we've also installed some indoors at Lawrence Hall of Science, VLSB, and University Hall to be able to measure in real time the effectiveness of our building filtration systems. And this year, we were able to install some um, indoors for University Health Services, as well as the Early Childhood Education Centers, uh, which are very helpful to be able to, in real time again, measure the indoor air quality um, and also see the effectiveness of some controls, such as putting portable HEPA filters inside in certain areas that don't have um, HVAC systems and building filtration systems. So it's been interesting and rewarding to work on this project this year. Uh, our campus has been impacted for the last four years by wildfire smoke. So it's certainly a relevant issue and challenge for California. Um, some of the controls that we normally would have um, responded with uh, were limited due to our COVID policies, such as uh, pulling in 100% outdoor air in some of our buildings. So there certainly were some challenges this year and some pretty extreme conditions. Uh, for example, we had one week in September. Many people that were around will remember the day that was orange. The skies were orange because there was uh, smoke in the region, very high level smoke coming from the August complex in Mendocino National Forest. And then our air levels on campus actually weren't so bad that day, but then when conditions changed and that smoke dropped, we had some of the most extreme conditions we've ever um, recorded here on campus with an air quality index uh, well above 200 on campus. So looking at that data in real time and, and understanding the impacts of some of these wildfire smokes is important for campus and for all of us that live in this community. It's been helpful um, to see variations across campus. Certainly Lawrence Hall of Science is often an outlier compared to the rest of campus because it's higher up on the hill and also Berkeley Aquatic Park, which is our reference monitor because it's down at the bay, um, often has very different conditions or they're earlier or later than what we're seeing on campus. So all that, all that data has been valuable to understand our local trends. If you're interested in viewing the data from these sensors, you can access the data points through our campus air quality map. So it's at the EHNS website, and you can click on any of the data points and then plot it in comparison to the other data points on campus or reference monitors. Or if you zoom out on the map, you can even compare it to other regional sensors in the Bay Area or across California. If you have questions or interested in the data or are working on similar projects, feel free to reach out to me via email. Thanks for your time.